Right. Um, afternoon, everyone. Welcome once again to our online training. <clears throat> um, as communicated before, my name is George Chawawa. Uh, I'm going to take you guys through the business continuity management module. Right. Um, I hope everyone's all set, network sorted, everyone connected. So we can start on this module. Um, the business continuity module will be one of our core modules, um, which will be rolled out to everyone in the program. So it's, it's, it's very important in terms of what we've recently experienced, um, the disruptions that were associated with the, the lockdowns, uh, the COVID induced lockdowns and how this disrupted business. So uh, this module uh, aims to capacitate us, you know, with, with skills and knowledge on how to respond to future business uh, disruptions. Right. So I think welcome in the introductions. I think we, we've touched a bit on that. Um, in terms of the approach, we have mentioned this before. Um, so it's going to be an online approach. So we'll do the training online. Um, we will assess you in terms of your class exercise, as well as self-study and quizzes. Um, for purposes of, of formal assessment, there will be um, individual and group assessments that will be done, as well as the final exam. Um, we've also rolled out the detailed study guide for your self-study. So if you, if you haven't gone through the detail, I urge you to go through the detailed guidance um, on business continuity that we've shared on the WhatsApp group, um, because these slides um, will, will, will be a high-level summary of what's in the detailed guideline. Right, some housekeeping in terms of our activity and ground rules. So because it's an online platform, we have to emphasize professional communication with others. Um, we will give each person a turn to speak. So whilst you're speaking, you must wait. I mean, for those who want to speak when someone has a platform, let's wait for them to speak first to finish and then you can speak. Um, again, it's online. We do not assume people know who you are. So before you speak, if you can kindly just state your name so that others can recognize who it is that's speaking. Um, let's, let's interact. Let's learn from others. Let's build on others' ideas and thoughts. Um, you know, we're all in the same sector. So chances are, um, some of the answers may even come from the group. So let's by all means, you know, build on, on others' ideas and thoughts, right? We will disagree and that's okay, but let's be respective and courteous, right? Timing, let's all be on, on time. Uh, sessions will start promptly on the agreed and the end um, communicated times. Uh, once again, for those who may not have had a chance to see the timetable, it has been it has been uploaded uh, on the class under announcements. So take time to download the timetable so that you are aware of when your actual class starts. Um, I urge you to try and log on, say, 10 minutes before the actual time to give yourself enough time to sort out any niggles and challenges that you may experience uh, prior to you know, successfully logging on, right? Uh, participation, let's share experiences. As I've said, most of the answers may actually reside within the group and not necessarily with the presenter. So let's, let's look to share our experiences and what we do yeah, within our own organization. All right, so if you've got any challenges, uh, communicate the challenges with the group um, on the platform, uh, on the on the on the chat as we are presenting, 
and we will respond um, where we can during the presentation or at the end of the presentation during our question and answer session. All right. Um, discuss successes, share articles, right? So if there's anything else you want to add with regards to activity ground rules, uh, please do so on the chat, right? Um, so at the start, we, we obviously need to, to assess what each individual expects out of the training. So from your side, you need to um, communicate what your expectation is. What do you expect to learn out of this, out of the business continuity? Um, bearing in mind what challenges you're experiencing in your own operation, right? So in the charts, in the chat box, um, if you can just document what your individual expectation um, is um, from this training so that we take that into account as we are presenting to make sure that um, all the areas that people are expecting to, to get guidance on have been covered in the training uh, and where areas have not been covered in the training then we can always add those at the end of the session under the uh, you know the questions or the general discussion uh, session so we will collate the individual expectation to then come up with the group expectations um, after this session before the next one um, uh, under business continuity to just make sure that all your uh, areas of concern have been covered. All right. Okay. So let's get into what we need to know by the end of this module, right? Okay. So by the end of this module, right? Um, the participants will need to outline the fundamental BCM principles and concepts. So what we're saying here, understand what business continuity management is. What is the basis of business management continuity? What, what, what is business continuity in the first place? Right? Then and explain and understand the link and relationship between risk and BCM. Right? So we need to understand what risk is and how risk and business continuity are linked or not linked uh, and how they can be applied to build resilience within your operations right we also need to be able to implement an effective crisis management structure within an organization so we, you would need to know what is what is crisis and how crisis is managed within your own operation right um, and then we also need to understand the business continuity life cycle, right? Uh, this will obviously enable you to be able to implement uh, business continuity within your operation, right? Um, understand the life cycle. So that's what we've covered. Those are the areas that we will look at with regards to the cycle. So look at the policy. These are the stages, policy, program management, embedding BCM in normal operations of, of, of your business, and then the business impact analysis and risk assessment. So what is business impact analysis and how is this linked to risks within the business? Uh, we'll also look at business continuity. What are the strategies that are there to ensure that your business um, is able to withstand shocks um, and threats you know, that, 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 are, that may face uh, the business and are likely to impact its ability to continue operation, right? Then we'll also look um, at the implementation of the business continuity plan. So now that you've come up with the plan that says, this is how I ensure my business can withstand, you know, the shocks and the risks, um, how then will I implement to ensure that what I have is not just on paper, but is also being implemented on the ground, right? And then lastly, we'll look at uh, who are the key role players, right? So in this business continuity, who is responsible for what to ensure that the process is effective and efficient, right? So those are the learning outcomes that we expect yeah, you, you participants to have, um, to be competent with at the end of the training, right? The training is, is split into four modules.
Um, the first we'll, we'll touch on the intro of what BCM is. So we'll, we'll, we'll touch on the definitions and, and, and what the whole um, concept of business continuity management is. Then the second module will focus a lot on risks, uh, specifically risk assessment. Uh, what is risks? What is a risk assessment? And how does risk assessment and business impact analysis, how are they linked? You know, what is business impact analysis and how does it link to risk assessment? Um, obviously, we'll look at this in the context of farming operations, as most of us are involved in that sector. Uh, the third module that we'll look at talks to developing and implementing a business response. So now that you've you have assessed what risks are and come up with a plan, um, we'll then look at how do you implement that plan to adequately respond to risks that your operation faces. And then lastly, we'll look at climate change and BCM, very topical. Um, climate change issues. Um, I'm sure most of us are familiar, um, you know, with what's been in the news and what we're even facing on the ground. You know, the the winters are shorter or longer. Uh, the summers are longer. You know, the rain is erratic. Uh, when it comes, it's a lot and it's late. And it comes with the plants have already, you know, died. So, so those are all elements that we are physically experiencing in our own operation. Uh, possibly linked to climate change. You know, how then do we respond to this um, through, you know, implementing a business continuity management? So that's what we are trying to to bring together, so that in our own operation we can adequately respond to climate change um, through implementation of adequate, you know, effective uh, business continuity strategies. So those are the modules that we will touch base on. Um, during this session, right? Okay, introduction to business continuity, first module, right? Um, the learning outcomes are typically the same as, as what we've highlighted on the overall module. So I won't spend much time on that. I'll go straight into uh, the content that we need to look at, right? So, 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 so there's this word we're throwing around, you know, business continuity. Um, what is it all about and, and why is it important? You know, I'm just a farmer, I'm, I'm just farming in, in Mashingo. Why must I be con concerned about business continuity? To me, it's just a technical term. Um, you know, is that what really it is? Right, so let's let's maybe get, get down a bit into this definition, right? So business continuity will, will denot, denote it BC. It's about having a plan to deal with difficult situations so that your organization can continue to function with as little disruption as possible. All right, so I'm gonna break that into two. The first part is about a plan to deal with difficult situations. Right? So when we speak of plan, plan happens before, right? So plan is almost preventative or responsive, right? But in this case, we're saying, we need to plan to have a plan in place, right? We need to know what do we need to do, right? To deal with a difficult situation. So we can either use our experience, we can either use information that we already know to then say, this is what we need to do when that situation comes so that we are better prepared, right? And the difficult situations we're talking about, they are aspects that can threaten the continuity or the existence of your business. Right? through sig significant disruptions, right? So as a business, you must have a plan in place to be able to deal with unforeseen or foreseen uh, situations that may, that, that, you, that your business can, can encounter um, that would affect its existence, right? They're disruptive, right? So think about your own operations. Think about the last two years. If there have been significant events that has threatened the existence of a business, were you prepared for these events? Right. And if you are not, what was the impact? 
do you know businesses that have actually closed down because of these significant disruptions? Right? Think of COVID. Think of the lockdown. Think of the ability or the inability to move to access markets, you know, to access information, access inputs because you were in a lockdown situation, access labor because people couldn't gather. That was serious disruptions that funding operations would have been significantly impacted. Right? District officers couldn't come to give you, you know, necessary information you may need on your farm. Right? Because most offices were closed, people were working from home. Significant disruptions. Right? Think of climate change, think of droughts, where you have a year where the rainfall is, is, is so erratic that you couldn't plant your crops on time, or when you planted them, the rain did not come on time. Significant impact on operation, right? So business continuity is about having a plan to deal with situations like that, to ensure that you come out on the other side with as little disruption as possible, right? And then business continuity management, right? So the first one was just business continuity. So business continuity management is, is the holistic process of now saying, okay, what are the things that are likely to impact? Right? What are the potential impacts or threats in my business? Right? So you list all the likely threats that can affect or disrupt your operation. And then you develop possible response plans to say, okay, this is how I will deal with each one of those threats, right? So it's holistic. It's not about now saying, let me identify the threats and then let me have a plan that will mitigate some of those threats, right? And bearing in mind that our, our objective is to increase the resilience of the business. So once the business minimizes disruptions, it is more resilient to those threats. By mere fact that we have mitigations against the threat, we have identified them and we've come up with mitigation. We are more resilient. We are more likely to weather the storm of those disruptions. Now think of, we've mentioned the BC business continuity as being a holistic process. In your own operation, right, what are the key threats right? that can have a potential negative impact on the resilience of your operation. Think of the last five years, if you've been in existence that long, what have been the key events that have significantly disrupted your business, right? Disruptions can be not being able to plant on time, for example to not being able to plant at all. Right? So the level of severity does vary, but the impact you will see, it will be significant in terms of the disruptive impact. So think about your own operations. You know, do, you, do you have any that you have in mind? Did you have any mitigations against any of them? Right. Let's think about that and then on the chat, um, in fact, we'll, in the groups, we'll put you in the groups, in the classes, just discuss, you know, you know, personal experiences, share personal experiences, so that you can see some of the issues that others are facing. Because they, they may be issues that you will face in the future. Right? Share mitigations that you have, so that others who may not have faced similar disruptions will have will be better prepared to respond to them should they encounter them in the future. Okay, right. So now that we understand business continuity and you know business continuity management, threats, responses, preparedness, right? Let's just touch base on some of the benefits of business continuity, right? We've mentioned events that can affect resilience, right? So we're saying these events can be unpredictable, right? They range from natural disasters to willful and accidental damage 
potential business crisis, right? All of these can significantly disrupt your operations. So for you to be better prepared, for you to better respond to these threats, you need to have a business continuity. So that is the key benefit of your business continuity. It will enable you to be able to weather the storm, to be able to respond adequately to threats that may be unpredictable or, or that may be willful right, as a result of what you actually do. Right? So think about that you know, with regards to, uh, mm. you know, do I really need a business continuity? Will there be benefits for me Instead of being in the field, you know, attending to the core things that I do, why must I sit and think about disasters? Because some may even think if you think about them, you're trying to get disasters to happen. No, we're saying let's know that they can happen and let's have a plan in place. Right. So some of the benefits that we have here in terms of uh, business continuity. Um, it can help you if you have the plan. It can help you keep your business trading during and after an incident. An right? incident being unpredictable events or predictable events that can disrupt your business. It can help you recover operations more quickly after interruptions. So remember, your plan will talk to what you can do to minimize the impact of those threats or your unpredictable events, as well as what you can do to recover costs the period of the threat, right? So that's what we're saying here. Uh, it can help you reduce the cost and duration of any disruption because you will have a plan of what you need to do and how to do it the most efficient way, right? As opposed to when you're in the midst of the crisis, you're trying to find your way around how you're gonna respond, right? You're better able to respond if you have your plan in place and you know what each respond is likely to cost you so you would have selected the best possible option on how you would respond so that's why it's important to to, to know that beforehand right mitigate um, a, a good um business impact impact business continuity plan will help you mitigate risks and financial exposure build customer confidence and trust right so you communicate to your customers they will know you are, you are better prepared you do think you know, about what could go wrong. So it does help them. Think of, you know, the people in your supply chain, your agricultural value chain, right? You may be sitting on the primary side where you are the, the person producing the crop, right? They may know, not that they, they, they've experienced COVID and they've experienced, you know, the disruptions that it did to their supply chain, which is you who's on the primary side, you know? you going to them and communicating your business continuity plan to say this is what we have in plan to prevent what happened before to prevent disruptions of us supplying you gives them better confidence that they're able to work with you that they're able to then create a resilient value chain that everyone in the value chain has minimized their disruptions right? it also helps them to see that you are thinking about the bigger picture so that's what we're saying there as well as you know the other um, areas that we have there that you can you know, go through i think most of them are self-explanatory right so as you can see there's more benefits than the negatives of maybe wasting time sitting trying to do a plan right so we all need to think about you know on operations we need to have a plan that talks to business continuity that identifies the threats that we are likely to face, and that is the mitigations in place. So remember, cost-benefit analysis of mitigations, we'll touch a bit on that later. Um, you need to come up with what works for what, what level you're operating. So mitigation can be very simple, can be very simple and effective to very highly complex, costly mitigation. So you must look at what works, cost-benefit analysis, look at what works best for your level of operation. Okay. All right, so there is a life cycle that talks to how you, you actually implement or what are the stages of, of, of the business continuity life cycle, right? 
Um, so we're saying it's got six phases, right? We talk of program management, talk of understanding the organization. We'll go into the detail, but basically we will simplify these so that you, you see what the objective of each stage is right? relative to you know, going through specific technical stages. But once you know what the objective of the stage is, you can then see what works best for your business, which may be smaller, maybe a one-man show, or it may not necessarily have the resources to implement what may be said in, in the, for example, I may talk of a, of a program management unit in a bigger organization. But obviously, if it's a smaller organization, we're talking about the owner. So that's the perspective that we will touch base on. Right, so just high level. Step one, we, 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 we speak of program management. So we're saying since BCM is crucial, right, it should have top management not, not right? So the first step in a business continuity management life cycle is to get top management's commitment, right? So what are we saying? We are saying for, for business continuity to be effective, you as the owner must buy into it. Remember, tone at the top, right? If you feel it's not important for your business, don't expect it to be successful in your business. If you don't see the benefits of business continuity management, don't expect your staff to see the benefits. Right? So it starts with you as the owner. Right? Understanding the organization, step two. So once you have bought into business continuity, once you see the benefits of business continuity, you need to now look at your own organization. There's no one size fits all. So you need to understand, right? So communicate this policy to key stakeholders, including outsource parties. In smaller companies or organizations, there may be a greater need to include the outsource parties. Right? So you need to now understand who is important, who are the stakeholders in my operation, right? What is my organization like? Is it a, is it a small, big, um, who are the key stakeholders? Who will be affected by disruptions or meeting or risks in my organization? And the mitigations, are they only going to be internal or there's other parties outside that I may need to rope in with regards to mitigations? For example, if you're outsourcing transport, if you're outsourcing um, cultivation, you know, not all the mitigations may necessarily reside in your organization. Some may sit with third parties. So you need to understand the dynamics of your own organization. <clears throat> and then step three, we need to determine the BCM strategy, right? So here we speak of technical th terms of sponsors with the authority to implement a policy, formulate a framework which covers activities identified under BCM, software, et cetera, right? But what we are now saying here in simple, in simple terms, you then need to identify how you will roll out the BCM, right? How you will now roll it out with regards to, do you have the necessary resources for the people, you know, the financial resources, remember we spoke of cost benefit. So you need to come up with strategies that work for the level of your organization. Remember, we said mitigations can range from simple mitigations to highly complex and costly mitigation. Right? So that's what we're saying there. Right? Then step four, develop and implement the BCM response. So once you've considered one, two, three, you will now have an idea of how you now need to develop it. So in simple terms, it can just be a list of the key threats that you anticipate your business will be faced with or be affected. And then next to each threat, an associated response. Then next to that associated response, a person responsible for that associated response. So you've allocated responsibility to individuals within the organization or to yourself with regards to how you respond. So that's what they are now saying under the develop the BCM response. Mm -hmm. Right. And then implementing, it's one thing to develop it, it's another to implement. Right. Develop, it's on paper, it's been developed. Implementing, it's happening on the ground. 
So it's not about just coming up with a laundry list of the risks and the mitigations and then filing them away nicely in the drawer. It's about ensuring that those mitigations, if some of them have to be done on a regular basis, then they are done on a regular basis. That's what we are saying they are implementing. Right. And then step five, exercising the response. We say create an exercise program to cover different plans, in line with the plan's objective, review the plans, and ascertain their limitations or gaps, right? So remember, what's happening, what's on paper must happen on the ground. You must know that what you've put on that plan is practical. It can happen, it is happening. Not to only see when the crisis, when you're in crisis time, that maybe what you had on the plan was not feasible or practical, right? Step six, maintain reviewing, embedding BCM within the organization. BCM is a living process. It must be part of what you do. It must be embedded within all your normal processes. It mustn't be something that we see on the side that we do because we have to tick the box. It must be dynamic. We speak of reviewing it. Right? It must talk to new threats that your business faces. Right? You need to be able to update to know what are the new threats that we are likely to face. Or some of the threats we have, are they still relevant? Or some of the mitigations, are they still relevant? Right? It must be a living document. Right? So based on these steps, if you can come up with a, with a BCM template, just using this, this approach, okay? then let's see what we come up with in our groups. Okay, right. Business continuity and strategy, right? Remember, we know what business continuity is and business continuity management. Now we need to say, how does that affect how we run our operations or how we plan long-term planning or strategy of our organizations, right? So business continuity strategy, right? New concept is the conceptual summary of preventative or mitigation strategies, crisis response strategies, and recovery strategies, you see, we're now combining, right? We combine mitigations, strategies, crisis response, and recovery strategies. So these must be carried out between the occurrence of a disaster and the time when normal operations are, are restored. Right? Let's break that down. So we're now saying, let's have a holistic approach right, to business continuity, right? So it's one thing to have the plan in place, that says this is how we we'll prevent right, those, those potential risks or threats. Right? It's another to say now that the risk is already manifested or happened, right, what do we now do? Right? We need to respond. So they speak of a crisis response. Right? Now, after we've responded, we obviously need to get back to where we were before the crisis. We need to recover. So three concepts, before, during, and then after. So the before is your, your, your business continuity, the plan that says if this happens, this is what we'll do. Then if it happens during the crisis, you need the crisis response. You're already in it. How are you going to respond? So there's something called a crisis response plan. right? And then now to come out and recover, and, be, and go back to pre-crisis, you need a recovery strategy. So if you, look, if you look at where we are now in terms of our operations, COVID has come, right? So those that had plans that spoke to shutdowns, hopefully you had something, and I know a lot didn't. They would have had strategies that said, okay, this is what we'll do. Should we not be able to move if there's a pandemic? But if they didn't have, as in most people, then they would have had a crisis response during COVID. They would have had a plan to say, how do we deal with the situation we're in now? You know, now that we can't move, 
you know, we can't sell, we can't go to markets. How do we go online quickly to ensure that our produce, people know that we're selling? And even if they click, yes, we want this, how do we even deliver it to them? Okay. So that's a crisis response that they'll be doing. They're already in there and they're trying to respond. And if you look at it now, countries are lifting restrictions. Uh, the economies are opening up. Businesses are trying to recover to where they were pre-COVID. So in the mass have now a recovery strategy. How do we ensure that we now get to sales that we were pre-COVID or operational production? So that's how you have a holistic strategy. Okay. So think about it. Think about the before, the during and the after. Did you have any plan that talked to any of those aspects? Even now as we're trying to recover, what's your recovery plan in your operation? How are you as a business planning to ensure that you recover and be more resilient? You recover to the pre-COVID levels. So that's what we're talking about here. Those are the things that we need to think about. Right. And as you determine these strategies, remember I've mentioned, think about the cost-benefit analysis. There's no point in coming up with a mitigation that's more costly than the associated risk. Or benefit. It makes no sense. So always think about what works for your organization, the level of organization, the resources that you have. And think about that as you're determining the, the strategy. Think about what is relevant for you. Okay. Right. So in groups, discuss and answer the following question. Questions. So we have those questions. We'll give you time. We'll put you in the classes, different classes, and we'll give you time to just go through those questions. And right? then we can discuss them afterwards. Okay. Right. The second module that we're going to look at talks to risks, right? Risk assessment and how uh, risks are linked to business impact and business impact analysis, right? So we're gonna to touch a bit. You should be able to, by the end of this, you'll be able to understand what business impact analysis is right? and how it aids in decision-making and consulting and reporting and communication within the organization. Then you must also be able, to, you should also be able to understand what is a risk assessment and how it aids in decision making on business risks and strategies and how we report um, risks. Right. Okay. Business impact analysis. Okay. So what is business impact analysis? Right. It refers to the process of identifying an organization's critical business functions and analyzing the potential disruptive impact of this business. Right. Two things identification of critical business functions, right? And analyze the second, analyze the potential disruptive impact. So what are we saying? So any business has critical functions that are core to its operations and survival, right? Think about your own business. What is critical? Staff, if you lose all your staff, rain if it doesn't rain yeah, but we're talking about business functions so this is within internal your own functions that are critical yeah. what happens if they are disrupted what is the impact right so in your own business list three critical functions and by critical, remember when you're in, when you're critical. Yeah, remember when they say you're critical, yeah, it means it's serious. So that's what we're saying there: serious business functions that have the potential of disrupt potential disruptive impact. Cash flow, equipment, machinery, 
Right. Okay, so that's what business impact analysis is. If you've identified them and you've identified the, the impact, right? There's steps that are highlighted there, right? Which you can use to identify or to, to perform a business impact, right? You need to assess the impact of a disruption to any functional area or business operation within the organization. And then determine the extent which that function and operational um, determine the extent to which primary functional and operational dependence exists within the organization. So what we're saying there is some of those functions are linked, domino effect, right? If one function is affected, it affects the other. So the impact is even multiplied. So always think about that. Always think about if cash flow is, is affected, what else is gonna be affected? You're not gonna be able to buy machinery, not going to be able to pay the people. Critical, right? Linked. So just remember some of those functions. You don't have machinery, you can't plow. You can't plow on time. By the time you plow, the rain, there's no more rain. So think about what, what affects the others. So you may not necessarily, the, the um, one functional, Disrupt, one disruption in, in one functional area is more likely going to affect others. So to say, right? And then thirdly, establish the restoration priorities and sequence of critical applications and essential business functions. So again, with the, the interdependencies that we've said, you need to prioritize what is important. What, if function A is linked to B, then it's critical that A is, is, is looked after, right? So you need to prioritize, you need to know what is priority, right? So those are some of the steps in determining um, uh, business impact analysis, right? So in your case, they may not be relevant in terms of interdependencies, but you still need to identify which are the critical and what is the impact. That's what's important, right? Okay, so business impact analysis and strategy. Remember, previously we touched on strategy and business continuity. So again, same thing. Business impact has a bearing on how we plan the direction of the operation, long-term, short-term strategy, right? So we're saying a resilient organization is one that can preempt and adapt to change. Preempt because you've got a plan in place that already identifies what could happen, right? You're better able to adapt, dynamic, changing your plans, keeping relevant to what is actually happening, identifying new aspects that can have affect or threaten your operation, right? So because you've got that plan in place, you're able to respond better to threats, whether planned or sudden change, right? In determining the strategy, right? Focus on inside out and outside in, right? Focus on yourself first, what functions you have, what, what is critical, what is impact, if that, what is the impact if those critical functions internally affected, right? Inside out. Right? Inside functions being affected by external forces and then outside in, outside forces, right? Two way. So you need to understand how major changes or incidents can affect your operations, right? So major changes outside, but also a customers and, and potentially their customers, interdependencies, right? Then establishing a consistent data set. Uh, business impact is an ongoing reiterative process. Um, again, it's not a once-off. Always keep identifying which are the critical functions, what is the threat. Remember, as your business changes, critical functions, they can be new, more critical functions, or as you change some of your 
your focus or scope areas, what may have been critical, may not be critical, interdependencies may be created. So as the business is dynamic, so is the critical functions and so is the threats, right? Uh, removing subjectivity. So in terms of de de defining the impact, remember, what I may think is the impact is different to what your staff, customers, or other partners may think is the impact. I'll give you a classic example. When it rains, someone may say that's a lot of rain. And someone may say, no, but it's it's okay. It normally happens. So there's a there's always subjectivity if something is not defined. But if you then define that 500 millimeters of rain is a lot and 100 millimeters is not, then there's no subjectivity. We just look at the rain gauge. Then it says, oh, that's a lot of rain. We all agree because there's a predetermined, as, um, predetermined measure of what is a lot and what isn't. Same with the impact. So for, for us to be able to talk the same language, we need to standardize the impact. So some people standardize it as a high, medium, low based on what could happen, right? So we're removing subjectivity, right? So you must always have a measure that is consistent so that if someone says it's high, we all know what it means, right? So that's what we're saying there. Right, so we spoke of business impact, right? We keep talking of risks. Right, so let's 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 unpack a bit risks, right? So that we see how risks talk to you know business impact, business continuity. Right. So risk, what is a risk? We all we, we all say risk, risk. Right? And remember, risk is, is 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 something that may or may not happen. Right? Okay, so on the chat, can we just identify, I mean, define a risk, right? Because we all know, or all speak of uh, how it's risky, how it's high risk. So what is a risk, right? Then we'll continue only with a risk assessment. I'll give you a minute to just type in your understanding of a risk. And then as part of the homework, tomorrow we will define or come up with the, not define, um, but we'll then ask you to go and just read up on the definition of a risk, the actual definition, right? Risk assessment, right? Risk assessment identifies the probability of risks to an organization and evaluates the impact of these risks. Right? So we are saying in your own operations, you must now identify what are the risks that my business is likely going to face. Then you list all the risks. Right? Then you evaluate, okay, so these are all the risks that my operation is likely to face, right? What is the probability that it will? Because remember, a risk, right? You, you're just saying this is something that can happen, may or may not happen, but it's a risk. Uh, you see when we look at the definition, a risk may or may not happen, right? That's what we're saying. So you first list all those. Then you now assess what is the chance that it will happen, right? So that's what they're saying there. You evaluate the impact, right? If it happens, what will then happen, right? If this risk happens, actually, what is the impact? Will my business be able to continue? If not, then that's a very important risk. It's, it's crucial. If the business can continue, even if that risk happens, then it's not crucial. So that's the reason why we need to assess the impact. 
because you may find a risk manifests or actually happens, but the impact is so low that there's actually no need to even think about that risk. So that's what we are saying there, right? You evaluate the impact of risks, right? Uh, completing a risk assessment is, is the first step in developing a business continuity, right? So we spoke of the business continuity plan, right? When I say you need to first understand what the risks are. And these risks can either affect the continuity of your business or not. That's why it's important to start there. So that you don't need to focus on risks that don't affect your business. You don't need to have mitigations for them. Don't even need to worry about them. Right? Bear in mind you, you are say you look at what is their impact. Right? The key risk events that are identified through risk assessment provide direction for the prioritization. Right? You prioritize based on that impact that we spoke of. The ones that are that have the highest impact that will result in the organization not being able to continue to exist are the ones that will be your top priority. And similarly, the ones with the least impact are your low priority. And you might not even have mitigations for them. Right. So it's important to do a risk assessment because it shows you your exposure, exposure being impact. So if you have 10 risks and two of them have serious impact and you don't have any mitigation for those two, you're exposed. That's what we're saying. Right. right. Uh, key definitions, self-explanatory. I'm not going to spend much time on those. But there is your risk definition right, that we spoke of, right? There is your risk identification. Okay, and how risk can be quantified, right? So you can look at those definitions. We will use these definitions as we are continuing, right? Qualitative approach, I'm not going to spend much time on that. But all what we are saying here is, remember, we spoke of when it rains, someone may say it's a lot of rain and someone may say it's not that much. Similarly with risk. We need to know when I say it's a high risk, then everyone in the company must know exactly what I mean. That's what we're saying, that people then quantify what high is or what medium risk is based on the consequences of what happens. So they can standardize those consequences to say, you know, it can be major if it causes lengthy disruptions in a business. So just think about that. But if you're a one-man show, you will know what high is to you. High is high to you. But obviously, if there's a lot of people in the company, the operations, when I say high the, and, the, and my other business partner says high, we must be able to standardize what high is. Right? So in simpler terms, that's how we just do it. Right? We must be able to say, if, there is, if I say this risk is high, we need mitigations. Then we must both be on the same wavelength with what high is. Right? Um, if you want to go a bit technical, you can now start to put the scales as they have here. But in simple terms, high, low, they must be standard across so that we all talk the same thing about those risks. Right. Risk assessments continued, right? An emergency management approach that recognizes the actions required. So we've already touched on what risk assessment is, right? But here we're just highlighting what, what, why we do this risk assessment, what is its intention? So we need to have a response to those risks, right? So that when they manifest, we already know how we respond to them or to prevent the impact, the severity of the impact with mitigations. So once we have mitigations that prevent the severity of the impact, and our organizations are more resilient. They are more able to withstand those risks because we already have planned how we will respond to those risks. Okay. Crucial thing here, you need to communicate this risk assessment to your organization. 
to your managers, to your staff, to your employees. Everyone needs to be aware of this risk. Because remember, the responsibility of managing this risk may reside in those employees. Right? And tone at the top, also important. You cannot expect to implement risks assessments when you yourself haven't bought in the idea. Right? You need to bring in your management because they also set the tone for their staff. So your farm manager needs to understand about risks and how they impact the organization. So that as he engages with the staff, there's alignment there with regards to the need to be aware of the risks, the need to have mitigations in place, and the need to implement those mitigations. Yeah. So you may need to bring in sub somebody who knows about risk assessment. Okay, you can if it's a bigger organization, but in smaller organizations, I'll just say follow that approach. What is likely to affect my business? What are the risks? Right? Prioritize them. Which ones are the very high ones that have the highest impact? Prioritize using impact. And thirdly, okay, now that I've prioritized using impact, can I now come up with generic, not generic, can I have specific mitigations in place to be able to counter those risks? And then assign people that are responsible for those mitigations and ensure that they actually are happening. Right. Developing and implementing a business response, right? How do we implement those mitigations? How do we develop them, right? Okay. Right. Okay, the importance. So those are some of the learning outcomes, right? We'll speak of business response and business continuity. We'll touch base on crisis management, right? Which is one of the responses, right? Remember, we spoke of crisis management earlier. We touched a bit on that. Um, how are we doing on time? We're going to have a short break. Then we will continue with the crisis management framework.